now I suppose uh, DIT is working on e-governance because definitely this uh, uh, should make uh, not only the governance uh, be effective, even the public to have more information about the government uh, would be, uh, I am sure that once e-governance is uh, fully implemented, public will have more information about the government and the governance. Okay. <coughs> So, as I told, Knowledge Commission has. Next, next, please. So, ch challenges. How to provide information in multiple languages? India has uh, about 400 languages, and uh, our constitutionally recognized languages are about 22. And we know that uh, many people do not know many of the languages. I mean, it's true, I think, compared to others, uh, many Indians know about two, three languages, but not <laughs> definitely 22 languages. But the information mostly is in English. Uh, but if it is done in a local language of a particular state, but definitely it can't be accessed by other states. Uh, though uh, many people refuse to accept English, still English is the main medium or information medium uh, to understand what is happening in the next state. So how to provide the information about n to non-literates? I believe this is the most important thing. If internet has to have wider reach, and you know that in India has, uh, the literacy rate is very low, and uh, this is where the main challenge is. The sheer mass of information, of course, okay, information glut, even if the government and the public and uh, for the uh, India, like a vast country, the sheer mass of information would be huge. Okay, so the prerequisite uh, for, uh, we know that in the early days of democracy, universal education is highly emphasized. And uh, India, in fact, though mooted about uh, right to education, somehow, even recently I was seeing in the news, uh, uh, they got a shot in the arm, some bill is uh, moving towards it though it was about uh, four years back, uh, some people thought uh, right to education should be implemented. Still, it hasn't taken shape. Next. <coughs> Next. Okay. So each organization library, see, as a, a library science person, I believe uh, librarians are the best equipped people in collecting and organizing information for dissemination purposes because uh, they have the various tools of cataloging or classification. We know that in the web technology, because uh, of late we are uh, uh, working more on the semantic web technology, how to make web much more, uh, the information on the web much more meaningful. Recently, um, we got a European Commission project also that uh, how to organize information on the web. So metadata and uh, ontologies are the most important. And uh, this is uh, basically the port of the library science people. <clears throat> and uh, if the information is targeted to citizens, public libraries should provide access to the information. We know that uh, it doesn't mean uh, everybody, next billion means everybody is connected with a wire. And I know that many people cannot afford to have internet connectivity. Or uh, even if they have, they have to have some skills to get the information on the net, okay. Library people basically are fairly well taught in the search strategies and uh, culling out information. When information is so much, how to filter information and give it to the end user, okay. So library, besides, one of the greatest advantages of public libraries is, unlike other government agencies, they look non-authoritative for the general public. So public libraries uh, through CIS, Community Information Services, they should uh, uh, pick up. And, uh, and I have been arguing that uh, they should uh, provide uh, information to non-literates through referral or liaison services and et cetera. Next. So technology, of course, definitely intelligent agents and other things are to be developed. People got, so there is a saying, people get the government they deserve. So if you want, uh, unless the people are well-educated with information, they cannot really elect good governments. Thank you. Uh,
panelist, Ms. Tamina Rahman. Ms. Tamina Rahman is the director of Article 19 in Bangladesh, and she will talk to us about another case study, we could say, about the RTI as it, it works in Bangladesh. Article 19, as you will know, all of you, is maybe the leading organization when it comes to campaigning for freedom of information, the right to information, all over the, work and all over the world. And the Article 19 has been very, very helpful in putting together this uh, survey, uh, co comparative survey of, of legal issues uh, on freedom of information from a lot of countries all over the world, including India and Sweden, two of the countries that we have been uh, hearing about here. This book is freely downloadable uh, on, on UNESCO.org. Um, but Madam Rahman, you have the floor, please. Good afternoon. Uh, <clears throat> I, 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 it was really interesting to hear um, uh, Mr. Ansari uh, sharing his experience of India and um, um, and uh, sort of uh, to hear that you know they have India has already been has had a, a, an RTI law has had three years of implementation period and is at a stage where it is beginning to evaluate and assess um, the. Uh, results of the RTI law and its connectivity with uh, poverty um, uh, uh, risk reduction and um, um, and, and development. Um, Bangladesh, on the other hand, is um, on the other part of the spectrum um, in some ways. Um, so I will share today some of the recent experiences of Bangladesh with regard to the uh, an RTI law um, and its development. Um, the uh, Constitution of Bangladesh in um, Article 39.1 guarantees the right to freedom of expression to all citizens and access to information, interestingly, to the press. And this is how the, uh, this is how the RTI movement emerged, that civil society organizations in Bangladesh in the mid-90s, following the uh, India uh, examples and developments, began to campaign for an, art, for an access to information law which goes beyond the press and an access to information law which is overriding and um, <clears throat> demanding for a comprehensive RTI law. In 2002, a draft law was submitted to the government, uh, to the erstwhile government, um, and um, um, however, um, it petered down for a while. Um, in 2007, uh, with the um, uh, with the uh, caretaker government in place in 2007 it, and um, its declaration of a program of reform initiatives, um, they began to show much more openness and interest in such a law um, for the first time, um, uh, for the first time a draft law was um, put on the web for public consultation. And um, this is uh, uh, interesting because lawmaking process in Bangladesh has seldom, seldom Something like this, where the draft law was put on the desk for public consultation. So, opening up a new uh, real uh, legislation making. Uh, <coughs> the law, uh, following the public consultations and the revisions to the draft, the RTI ordinance was passed in October, uh, on October 23rd as the RTI ordinance 2008. The law was mostly generally welcomed, however, there were some reservations about certain parts of it in terms of the exceptions uh, being too, um, uh, uh, the, the regimes uh, being too broad and ex uh, with uh, w wider uh, exceptions. However, generally it was uh, welcomed and many, per the per particularly with regards to its application to all form of information by all public bodies. Um, it included actually for the per, uh, also public bodies and NGOs and private organizations. Um, with, um, also, the law uh, overrides in, con in consistency with other legislation such as the Official Secret, uh, Secret Act, the rules of government, rules of business, etc. And also, it gives um, much more uh, wider powers to the Information Commission, making it a much more independent body. However, the challenges for implementation before, uh, for the implementation of this law is uh, uh, multifold. Uh, to begin with, first of all, um, 
the uh, this law wa ha is still an ordinance, which is um, that it has to go for a vetting process to when when a parliament is in session, and so the the commitment of the political government is to to a large extent will determine whether the shape of the law will remain as such, and also whether the law will then be uh, enacted as a an act of the parliament. So um, uh, that's. Um, we are having an elections uh, on the 28th of December, and after which, you know, uh, during the first, there are about 79 uh, such uh, ordinances which will be placed before the before the Parliament. Secondly, uh, I would say um, that uh, it's uh, especially important that Bangladesh is a country, especially uh, uh, is is a country with. Where pre with pre prevalence of poverty, vulnerability, um, endemic corruption, um, uh, and also very low level of literacy, uh, particularly low within South Asia, 8.3 for um, males and 3.1 for females. Um, so th that that brings us to the point that um, in the implementation of the legislation, it has to be tackled from two sides, both the demand side and the supply side. From the demand side, um, we also have to see that the, uh, the legislation, the new legislation will require a new regime of public uh, uh, officials um, uh, who, with, a new, with a different um, mindset. Uh, public officials usually have been bound by rules of businesses, the Official Secrets Act. They will now, would, many of them, would now need to operate in an environment which re requires much more openness from them. That would mean that uh, the government would now have to actually um, recruit n uh, new regimes of information officers, train them, um, and uh, build their capacities. Also, there needs to be an assessment by the government as to determining the optimum number of information officers necessary for the implementation of, uh, of this law in the country. New terms of references would need to be prepared for the government for the post and, the, and their orientation. Uh, also training programs, exchange visits, and so on and so forth. The other side of the uh, demand, um, uh, the, uh, the other side um, of the supply side is about record management. I was quite surprised. Um, I, I, one of the questions I really wanted to ask Mr. Ansari was that, uh, um, given the scale of India, how was uh, how was it possible to manage this detailed uh, information management systems and record management, which would be required? if we want the law to be implemented by um, uh, people below poverty line, um, uh, and especially this is the case for Bangladesh as well. So therefore the government would then need to identify actually key agencies and make a phase-wise plan to, um, for the infrastructure development or for information uh, supply. That is another challenge for the government. Um, also, we have, for example, uh, the Department of Mass Communication, the Press Institute of Bangladesh, uh, the National uh, Institute of Mass Communication. All of these are actually set up um, for providing information and training um, uh, uh, in, um, uh, in the information sector. However, it would the, these um, the definitions and uh, or, and the scope of the activities of these organisations would need to be redefined uh, to bring them under the re, um, for for better implementation of the law. On the uh, on the um, so these are some of the challenges that the government would have to address. However, on the supply side, I will, uh, uh, sorry, on the de uh, demand side, as I was saying, that low level of public awareness is one of the major uh, reasons of uh, major uh, uh, sort of issues that not only the government, civil society organisations, public at large would have to handle. We would see that uh, that uh, very few legislation or laws are under are known and understood by the public. Uh, generally, let alone at the rural community level among low educated public. So there are mass campaigns for awareness on the law and on the principles of the law would need to be um, had and some uh, civil service organizations are already taking, already kind of engaged in different types of activities. Uh, Article 19 Bangladesh also has partner organizations who are working on some of these issues and they're very interesting and innovative ways in which they are actually um, um, engaging in these campaigns, um, which is, uh, for example, 
we could uh, like um, um, uh, meet the uh, meet the people. We, uh, the, you know, it's kind of uh, on a, on after mobilization, a certain certain on certain issues, for example, health related or education related. Local level public officials are then invited to uh, for public hearing amongst community for for community hearing and. Uh, Stakeholders then kind of uh, um, you know, bring uh, to their attention some of the issues uh, with regard to information they have said, uh, they have um, had, and that's how the process of engagement begins between public officials and um, uh, and the public uh, at uh, uh, at large. So the, on the other hand, again, sort of um, um, social movement um, for effective application of the law would be another another. Um, issue that would need to be um, tackled. Um, so uh, these are some of the uh, challenges uh, for the implementation, uh, for, for broadly for the implementation, but there are certain immediate challenges also that the government would need to um, uh, handle, which is that um, the information commission needs to be set up as soon as possible, whether uh, it has a 90-day period within which the Without which, within which the commission has to be set up. Without setting up the commission, the work cannot proceed. Rules, uh, delegated rules, uh, need to be formulated for the implementation of the law. Uh, uh, also, public officials need to be recruited. All of that we can only be done once the information commission is in place. The government, it, um, at this moment, um, uh, there is great hope that the government would still be able to do it within the time it has in its hand and not wait, wait for the political government. Um, these are some of the, this is kind of uh, some experiences that I have shared um, on the basis of the work that we do in Bangladesh and the challenges that for implementation that uh, the Bangladeshi government but also civil society organizations to, along with human rights organizations would have to handle and tackle. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and I'll give more time to you who have very patiently uh, stayed with us. But I think we will have time for, for a few number of questions and I would actually like to have the questions bang, bang, bang and then hand over uh, to my panelists just a minute or so, each of them to briefly reply to you. So if you would put up your hand, uh, I'm sure somebody would come around with a microphone. I hope so. It's happening now. We've got the first question here on the second row. And if I see another hand, I see one over there. And the third hand, straight here. OK. Hi, my name is Vinay. I'm from an NGO called IT for Change uh, from India. This is actually part comment and part question. Um, you know, We've been speaking about access to public health information. And the theme of this year's IGF is in, in a meaningful, you know, which is meaningful and useful from a development perspective. And I think that's where access to public health information comes in. and. Uh, one of the questions which I have for uh, Professor Ansari is that this, the RTI Act states that in spirit, uh, you should not make people come and seek information, but information should be pushed through, which is what also the Prime Minister spoke about. So what is being done in order to push information? Because if you still see most of the departments, unless somebody goes and files an application, no information is being provided. It's being done only in some cases. For example, the Gujarat government in their municipal sites, they have details of how much money each corporate has spent. But that's not happening everywhere. So what is being done to push information? The other thing I just wanted to state was, when we're talking about uh, access to public health information and the internet, we also need to look at uh, using other ICT still over the internet, maybe look at radio or the net, because there are still not many people who might be having access to the internet in developing countries. And on the issue of access to developing countries itself, I think there needs to be public investment, more public investment in infrastructure, ICT infrastructure, so that more people have access uh, to the internet. Yeah, that's about all I had. Thanks. Uh, Professor Ansari highlighted the important intermediary role of civil society organizations um, with respect to right to information requests. Um, I would also highlight the important role of media organizations and journalists um, in using right to information legislation. And in this respect, we seem to be hampered in a rather particular way in, in India in the, uh, uh, the 
prevention of carrying news of, of the independent broadcasting outlets, the commercial radio stations, the new community radio stations that have been licensed. Um, and I'd be interested in your comments on this because I, I see the same errors have been made in the new community radio legislation, new, new community radio policy in Bangladesh, where there is a ban on, on the carriage of news. And it seems to me that if we're not able to carry news on the broadcast stations, we're really hampering the ability of getting out the, right, the information that you have a right to access. Thank you, Steve. Can we it's a, a question for both India and Bangladesh. How much money did the government actually allocate to implementing the uh, RTI? And in Bangladesh, how much money has been asked for when they do eventually um, ratify the law and implement it? Thank you. Enka Sonare, I'm representing NGO, Ambedkar Centre for Justice and Peace. So I must uh, compliment and congratulate Mr. Ansari for uh, giving the very good brief, and we are hearing uh, and uh, uh, reading the newspapers, wonderful work done by the RTI and the commission. The very important thing um, uh, about uh, the India is that about 850 million people in India, they uh, live in the countryside, they live in the villages. And there is a question of accessibility of the, uh, the internet. Uh, the internet is not accessible, most of them it is not accessible for 850 million people there in the villages. And in these 850 million people, there are 250 million people, they are the scheduled castes and scheduled tribes. They are formerly untouchables and the tribals. They are so poor, their earning is less than dollar a day. A person who earns, a family earns a dollar, that is 50 rupees a day. How can they spend uh, 10 rupees or 20 rupees, that is half a dollar on internet access for an hour in a day? So it's a really a question of how to make this information available to the vast majority of the people of India and mostly the marginal, marginalized and neglected people, that is scheduled caste and scheduled tribe. So this is a question before the, uh, the um, uh, information, um, uh, the, the commission, uh, that uh, they should make some scheme available where the uh, people will have the access to the information. Thank you. Thank you. Making public funded research available in the public domain. And I just wanted to add, uh, you know, a little, uh, Additionality to, uh, additionality to it, that a lot of support is given by United Nations and, and the UN itself gets done a lot of work. And a lot of it is not put in the public domain, and especially when I'm talking about here, applications that are developed from funding given to UN by uh, several sovereign governments. So all, you know, whatever international flows take place for funds, and whatever uh, intellectual property that's created. I mean, there should be a move maybe from, from Internet Governance Forum or whatever, that all that should really be uh, uh, put in the public domain. Thank you. The, um, the budget has to be um, uh, uh, formulated by the, uh, uh, by the Information Commissioner. So um, it is one of, the, one of the first tasks that the Information Commissioner would have to do. He, he would have to um, um, do a budget uh, for the implementation of the law, but secondly also there's a suggestion in the law that the Information Commissioner also needs to put together a information fund, and that fund be, um, would uh, then be uh, um, organized. But also there are other development partners in Bangladesh who are interested in very much in the implementation of the law, and it is understood that many of them will participate in the um, in generating this um, uh, information fund for the implementation of the law. And secondly, I just wanted to uh, reply to the, um, uh, the, uh, the gentleman over there about his question about internet use in the communities. I think if you look at it, if you look at it from a very individual manner, then of course it, uh, um, it, access to internet would be very difficult for the rural poor, but in Bangladesh some of very innovative work is going on in terms of having community-based um, centers, information centers, where communities come and participate, and there are other uh, information materials available for, their, for them, and also they're person by a community um, person, and they're, they're inter there is internet access for, for them. So the community can come, those, of you, those, of, those who are interested, but also who can actually use the internet and are educated enough to use it. So these kind of schemes can also be, um, you know, put, to, put, into, put in place for, uh, to, for greater outreach uh, of internet. Thank you. I would like to answer uh, our friend's question from NGO that you were mentioned.
mentioning that, I fully agree with uh, some of your concerns, how the rural people and the illiterate people. That's why I was telling uh, that uh, the public library can play a great role in uh, reaching the public and uh, helping them, even if somebody wants to put an RTI I mean, application, maybe a librarian can help uh, putting down in paper. In fact, I would like to ask uh, Professor Ansari whether uh, in the RTI uh, to make it uh, widely reachable and uh, usable, whether they are thinking of uh, some organism, I mean like uh, public libraries or some wing of the public, I mean uh, the government uh, to take into the fold. I donate my time to Professor Ansari because he has uh, most of the questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much indeed. <coughs> uh, quite a few questions have been raised. Uh, let me take uh, uh, one about uh, access uh, to internet-based information. It is true. Uh, that India being uh, a poor country has uh, infrastructural constraints and uh, 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 we all are aware of uh, that the infrastructure facility is not in place though by and large most of uh, people in our country are uh, uh, computer and uh, IT savvy uh, uh, but uh, there are limitations but I wish to mention to you uh, especially RTI in relation to various development activities which are being implemented at the village council levels, panchayat levels. And people have uh, reasons to seek information about all the, pro uh, the, the schemes and the programs which are being implemented at the district's level. And uh, the public authorities have been identified, including the village councils, a uh, Pradhan or a uh, head of uh, the panchayat village council is also a PIO information provider. And under the act, there are 17 parameters under which information is to be put in public domain. And these uh, parameters touch upon almost all the activities of a uh, organization depend, uh, beginning from the vision, mission, uh, the policies, the various uh, composition of the committees, the decision making processes, uh, and the minutes of the board and the committees. Uh, the compensation being paid to the employees, the work allocation, duties and responsibility of each officer and what they have done. So you can think and name any uh, aspect of information uh, that is to be put in the public domain, uh, both in the published form, also in the internet. The internet uh, and the computer facilities are being provided and have been provided at all the village levels, at all the panchayats they have. But again, I would say because of the power and uh, supply and other constraints, uh, including the ability to uh, operate uh, you know, the internet facilities, that may be uh, limiting uh, the access. But what I'm trying to say is the information which is to be put in public domain have already been defined. The, even the information has been defined. Information means any material in any form. It has to be the material information. So you can ask for. At the same time, each and every public authority is to clearly record reasons, administrative or cost judicial decisions, uh, why certain decisions have been taken, and they have to explain to the affected persons. So if you look at the provisions in the act, you would uh, very well know uh, that even the information management, although it is a problem uh, because of the vastness of the country, uh, but each and every public servant uh, his duties and responsibilities are known and he is responsible for uh, explaining any action that he has taken. So you have at the organizational level, you have at the units level, you also have the individual's level. Now if any information that you think of is to be provided by a public authority is not available to you, you have every reason either to complain to the commission and uh, the commission will find out from uh, the concerned department as to why the information has not been given within the stipulated period of uh, 30 days. In case Mr. Ansari, the information uh, relates to uh, the life and liberty, it has to be provided within 48 hours. So the uh, information seeker, a citizen, is very powerful in seeking the information and that is provided. Uh, a question has been raised about uh, uh, the information which is uh, not being uh, disseminated through the broadcasters, TV, radio. 
I may mention that even before the passage of RTI Act, uh, the media had uh, access to information, the media policy has been very much favorable, uh, but with the commencement of uh, the RTI Act, even the media persons, they seek information about the activities of uh, public servants, the public bodies, and that is disseminated. I wish to mention that the information which is, the disclosure of which is not in the national interest or in the commercial interest of the organization, that is barred. Uh, but again, the decision on this issue is to be taken by the commission. So one need not ask questions in a very hypothetical term. It has to come out that why he is seeking information and then as to what is the public interest in the seeking information, just to avoid any misuse of uh, the policy. Uh, regarding disclosure of information, as you mentioned, uh, I have already explained to you, uh, well, uh, uh, the act provided for that within 120 days, all the public bodies have to put in public domain uh, the identified information, both in the published form and in the, uh, also on the internet. Now, you have to identify and tell us as to which public department, as to which department or the government department has not disclosed, immediately action would be taken against them. So, uh, this is not true that any one of the public bodies have not put in uh, the information in public domain. It is already in the public domain, and, but you have to see as to which uh, uh, department is to keep the information which is responsible for creating, generating certain type of information and where the information lies. I may also mention, uh, as uh, Dr. Prasad mentioned, that even the private sector NGOs are also covered under the provisions of the RTI Act. Section 2F clearly says that any information which is accessible by any government department under any law can also be accessed by a public uh, by a, uh, by a citizen. For example, uh, the information relating to uh, telecommunication operators, private banks, and uh, public utility services like private schools, private hospitals, all these information are available and you can seek information. The only uh, hitch is that you do not have to put the application to the concerned body, rather you have to put up application to uh, the concerned department, the regulatory authority, and it is the regulatory authority will obtain the information and they provide to you. So even the polluting units, those uh, manufacturing units, which are uh, maybe the, uh, committing certain harms, you can question the uh, concerned regulator in case of the private banks, the RBI. In case of environmental concerns, the Department of Environment. In case of uh, telecommunication operators, uh, the uh, uh, tribe and similar organizations. So almost all the organizations, public, private, including the NGOs, are very well covered under the provisions of the Act. You have to simply put up an application and then find out, then see what happens within 30 days. That is a miraculous way of obtaining the information from any public department. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Ansari. I'm sorry to applause to our keynote speaker and panelists. <laughs> to yourself as well for a very active and, and good participation. Thank you very much and have a fine evening.